Welcome to Tech Talk with Hughes Performance. I'm Pete Nichols. Today we're going to be continuing our torque converter technical series discussing converter construction and operating theory. If this is your first time tuning into our channel, it'd be doing us a big favor if you go ahead and click that subscribe button. Also be sure to like and share our videos. We appreciate our viewership and we couldn't do this without you, our valued customers. So the last two episodes, we talked about overall general construction, some basic operating theory, and then we dived into OEM style lockup torque converters and how those function. Today we're going to get a little bit deeper detailed on the one-way clutches that are used inside torque converters. Uh, this is worthy of its own episode because there's so many different options and so many different ways that they function and uh, there's just a lot of great material to cover here. Uh, so if you remember from the first episode or if you haven't watched it, do yourself a favor and go back and watch it. We talked about how the stator is basically an energy recovery device between the impeller or the pump and the turbine. And the stator redirects fluid flow to the impeller at low RPM where there's high rates of vortex flow within the torque converter and it provides torque multiplication by physically accelerating the fluid against the impeller which gives the impeller more leverage. That applies more torque to the turbine which then in turn applies more torque to the input shaft of the transmission and makes your vehicle go forward. In order to do that, the stator has to have a one-way clutch inside of it. And you can see inside here, this is an OEM stator with an OEM style roller clutch assembly. You have the spline element, which is an inner race, and that uh, engages with the stator tube on the front pump and the transmission. You have the outer race here, which you can see has a ramp shape to it. You have roller elements and then springs inside here. And what this one-way clutch does is it allows the stator to lock in one direction. You can see I can't turn that inner race, but if I apply force this direction, it does turn on the inner race. What's happening at high vortex flow, so that's a circular fluid motion between the turbine and the impeller, that fluid is being directed against the inside of the stator vanes. The force of that fluid forces the stator to try and turn this way. It can't because of the one-way clutch. Therefore, the fluid accelerates through the stator, hits the impeller, and creates that torque multiplication effect. As engine RPM increases, you're driving the turbine faster and faster. So the turbine is starting to couple to the impeller speed, which is the engine-driven element of the converter. As that happens, you experience a change in vortex flow, and it drops off significantly. So that circular motion of fluid between the two elements starts to become more linear and less aggressive. And that's just simply due to the RPM and the coupling abilities of the converter. When that shift in vortex flow happens, and you see that reduction at higher RPM, the fluid flow changes through the stator as well and the fluid instead of contacting the inner vein here starts to flow along the outside of the vein. When that happens you have fluid force pushing against the outside of the vein which then lets the stator spin with the other two rotating elements of the converter just like so thanks to the one-way roller clutch inside of the stator. The purpose of that is torque multiplication simply isn't needed at high RPM when the converter's trying to achieve an efficient fluid coupling. By allowing the stator to overrun on the one-way clutch, you're increasing converter efficiency because all three rotating components, the impeller, the stator, and the turbine, can rotate as close to a one-to-one -one ratio as possible you're still going to have some efficiency loss because it is a fluid coupling like we talked about in episode one, uh, but it does get you as close as you can. Now, that's the basics of one-way clutches inside of stators. There's different styles. OEM roller clutches, depending on design, can only handle so much horsepower and torque output before you'll overcome either the clutch's ability to hold or you'll just exceed the metal's fatigue strength. 
The aftermarket has addressed this, so the next move forward from the OEM style roller clutch was a heavier duty version of a roller clutch. You can see we have the outer race similar to just like the OEM, we have the inner race, we have the roller elements, and we have the springs. So this is based on OEM technology, but it's a premium grade steel. It has a proprietary heat treatment, so the metal has a lot higher fatigue strength. And you can see, compared to an OEM outer spray race, it's significantly thicker. So we're over doubling the width of this sprague race, which effectively doubles the torque capacity of this sprague race. This particular style of roller clutch, or if some guys do call it a sprague, uh, was designed back in the 80s. Uh, it's very strong. We still use it in a lot of converters today. Um, we did not design this. It was designed by one of our competitors who's very well known in the industry and produces really top-notch products. And it's used by a huge variety of converter manufacturers out there. We've fine-tuned the design to our own specs over the years and made some minor improvements because we still do use so many of these in certain converter builds. But ultimately, it's still true to the original 80s upgraded design over the OEM technology. Uh, I have personally seen this roller clutch go into the sixes in the quarter mile in a 3,200 pound leaf spring radial tire car. I don't recommend it for that performance level. We were in a pinch at the track. It did the job, it set a record, so uh, that's not typical of this Sprague, what it'll be used in, but it does go to show just how strong this Sprague design is. Moving up from the roller clutch design, you have what is actually a true Sprague rather than a one-way roller clutch. This is a cartridge assembly that contains the Sprague. You can see you have the stator caps here just like you do on the stator that we have on display here. I'm going to go ahead and take this apart so you can see what makes this Sprague cartridge tick. Just like with the roller clutch, we have a splined inner race, we have an outer race, and then you can see in here we have a true Sprague featuring dog bone elements. This is similar to Spragues that are used in transmissions, say like a Turbo 400, uh, with the intermediate sprag, a 34 element unit you might be familiar with. Uh, this isn't out of the 400, that's just a good comparison if you're familiar with internal transmission parts. So we got the inner race, nice wide piece, very heavy duty, custom heat treated steel. And then we have the sprag inside the outer race. You can see the outer race lacks the ramps that the roller clutch does. The reason for that is the Sprague does all the locking activity itself without the use of ramps. It has a dog bone shaped element that has a little bit of wiggle room for it and it will allow rotation in one direction when vortex flow is low in the converter so that the converter can couple efficiently. When that torque multiplication is going on at low RPM and high rates of vortex flow these dog bone elements rock over very slightly and cause the sprag assembly to lock so that you have that torque multiplication feature. This is generally considered an upgrade over the roller clutch. There are some variations in design out there that have varying torque capacity limits, uh, but this is a really good quality performance design. You can throw quite a bit of power at these. Uh, in our own experience and own opinion, uh, this Sprague design versus the aftermarket roller clutch design in terms of torque capacity are on a pretty level playing field. They'll handle about the same amount of power generally. Um, we don't use a lot of these in our converter builds simply because we've had such good success with this aftermarket roller clutch, but we do have this as an option. If you prefer this style of Sprague in your converter build, we can generally fit it to most of our custom builds. If you like the style Sprague, it's no issue at all. The next move up from that is the mechanical diode. The mechanical diode was also invented back in the 80s, again from a competitor. Uh, very effective design. We actually have a display piece here. This was made for us by Epilogix, who designed the diode originally. and. 
You may or may not be able to see this on camera, but uh, it's a clear see-through model so you can see the elements at work. It's got interlocking square cut spring-loaded teeth that engage a groove inside the race that provide the locking effect. If you're familiar with say a um, one-way clutch in a bicycle crankshaft that freewheels, kind of the same principle. Or your ratchet that you use in your tool set, kind of the same principle. It's basically a ratchet style clutch inside the stator. We have one taken apart here Again, just like with the roller clutch and the sprague, you have the splined element that goes on the stator tube. You can see the pockets that are machined for the square cut teeth, which look like so. And you have these little tiny springs that ride beside the race, inside the race, between the race and the teeth. You have the outer race you can see it's got notches machined into it for the edges of these teeth to seed into. And that's what provides the locking action. So going back to vortex flow and torque multiplication, you'll hear a ratcheting sound in this if you actually play with one by hand. That allows the stator rotation at low vortex flow, high RPM, and then locks to where it can't turn at high vortex flow and lower PM where torque multiplication is needed. There are varying diode designs out there. This sample is an older five strut model. Five struts refers to the amount of square cut teeth in the diode, five pieces there. Depending on the strut count, that's gonna affect how much torque capacity this diode has. This particular diode here is an updated 10 strut model that we source from Sonics. Uh, we only use Sonics diodes in our diode converter builds. They're the highest quality diode out there. They're readily available. Um, this diode in a 10 strut model will literally handle a pro mod or radial versus the world car that's making an honest four or 5,000 flywheel horsepower. It'll do it all season long without any failures. So as far as one-way clutches for your stator go, the 10-strut mechanical diode is your absolute strongest, most premium, heavy-duty, longest-lasting option. There is a little bit of an increased cost to this because this is an expensive part to manufacture, but for a high horsepower application, uh, an extremely heavy-duty application, maybe you have a pulling truck that you're competing with or you might just want the absolute best that money can buy for your street car, or your tow rig. The diode's a great upgrade for that. We do have these come standard in our Pro SSX series of converters. It's optional in our Pro series. And we can even fit these to some of our street converters for the guy that might want one of these in their converter. The final option that we have here isn't a clutch at all. Uh, you may have heard the term spragless converter. And that's where this piece comes in. This is a solid chunk of steel with the stator spline inside it. It has no moving parts. It installs in place of a roller clutch or a sprag or a diode inside the stator. And it permanently locks the stator to the stator tube of the transmission. It does not allow rotation of the stator when vortex flow drops off and the converter's trying to achieve an efficient fluid coupling. Uh, Back in the day when there weren't a lot of good sprag options, spragless was really popular because OEM roller clutches were prone to failure. Uh, so this spragless insert eliminated that possibility. Um, the problem potentially with a spragless converter is that because it does not allow the stator to freewheel at low vortex flow, you're always going to be shearing fluid between the impeller, this side of the stator, the turbine, and this side of the stator. When you shear fluid in a converter, a couple of things happen. One, heat increases because you have more friction inside the converter. Two, efficiency drops off because the rotating elements of the converter are basically kind of fighting against the stator at high RPM when the turbine's trying to efficiently couple to the impeller. Um, the trade-off is that a spragless converter is absolutely bulletproof. 
There's no moving parts. It's a solid chunk of steel. You literally have nothing to break or fail or slip. As such, spragless converters are very, very popular in drag racing applications. Um, when you're operating an engine and transmission for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 seconds at a time, crossing a distance of 660 or 1,320 feet, um, generally the heat created by the spragless converter isn't an issue in terms of being able to properly manage it. In fact, there's a lot of spragless converters out there in drag cars that don't even run a tranny cooler. So if the converter design's right, heat management's really a non-issue in a drag racing application when it comes to running a spragless converter successfully. Um, the trade-off with a roller clutch it's possible to get a little slippage. Uh, same with the sprag uh, on the initial hit when you release the trance brake or you're launching off the foot brake in a drag car. The spragless insert eliminates that possibility for slippage in the one-way clutch. So a spragless converter is known for outstanding consistency. Uh, those of you watching uh, that have some experience with drag racing know that some of the most important factors in a successful pass our reaction time and the 60 foot times and that's where if you're gonna have sprague slippage you're gonna see it affect your pass down the eighth or quarter mile pass the spragless converter eliminates that from being an issue so it's very popular for that reason in bracket racing and index racing applications where you're not necessarily concerned with who's crossing the finish line first you're concerned with uh, producing the most consistent elapsed time back to back to back to back throughout a day of racing. You're basically racing against the clock. Um, that's where a spragless converter really shines. It also shines in extreme high horsepower applications as well. Uh, we were the first in the threes and up with a uh, power glide transmission in Bob Ram's Nitro's Pro Mod Camaro. Had a spragless converter in it. Um, no issues. So they work really well in high horsepower applications as well. Uh, when it comes to street use, you want to avoid a spragless converter primarily because of the heat management issue. With the fluid sharing that's going on between your three converter elements in a spragless converter, uh, you're going to overheat the converter eventually. You might be able to take it out on a Saturday night and run it down to the local burger stand and hang out with your buddies and not have an issue, but if you want to drive it more than 15-20 minutes, you're going to overheat the converter. Uh, you're going to damage the fluid. Damaged fluid leads to damaged transmission parts and converter parts. So you really want to avoid spragless converters on street use where the vehicle is going to see any type of steady state operation for any length of time or distance. Uh, You've got to have an active overrunning stator in a street car. Or if you have a max effort application, say like a drag week competition vehicle, even though you might be making 2,000 plus horsepower, you're driving that car 1,500 miles over the course of five days, you're gonna be at a lot of low throttle angles, a lot of lower RPM, a lot of cruising speeds. This stator needs to be overrunning in an application like that in order to properly manage transmission heat. Um, so the spragless converter has a pretty narrow range as far as when and how it should be used. You wanna keep that in mind, and if you're dealing with a converter builder that suggests a spragless converter for your street car, you might want to give it a second thought uh, because you're probably going to run into some pretty serious heat management issues. So that's literally all of the options going on inside a converter for one-way clutch activity. I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you found it educational. If there's other content you want to see, definitely leave us a comment below. Uh, we'd love to film whatever you guys and gals want to uh, learn about. Uh, hit that subscribe button, share the video, like it. You'd be doing us a huge favor. And we will see you for the next episode. Have a great day.